Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Welcome everybody to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. I'm here with John. Hey, it's been a uh, it's been a minute, John. What's been going on? Man, it's been uh, it's been a busy week, hasn't it? It has. I uh, trying to think what like everything that's happened. Yeah. Um, you had a big weekend. I did. We're going to talk about that today. Yep, we'll talk about that. Talk about Mike's foray into the cart competition circuit yeah come on it wasn't that bad it was it was fine we'll talk about it we'll talk about it um Uh, hey we moved the uh we moved the the propane tank we did progress is being made we have moved it from the trailer to your driveway yeah it's on dollies and by we i mean you because i was not around for this well we say me it was really it was a our buddy with a skid steer. Oh, not right on. That makes me feel a little better. I was afraid you muscled it down by yourself. Yeah, all nine hundred <laughs> pounds, and I mean, it it had water in it. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh huh. Siphoned that off. I'm sure there's still some water in the bottom of it. So. Yeah. But yeah, I did not muscle that off by myself. And then you said you got a resurfacer. Yeah, I'm a. I, I had thought I I'd thought about doing a couple of different things, trying to like get it cleaned up and ready to work on, mm-hmm. um, to include taking it down to like a metal shop and having them sandblast the whole thing. Okay. Um, outside and inside. Well, you start with the outside and then maybe do the inside. We'll see what once the inside we get will, into the inside. We'll right. see what the inside looks like. Um, we may decide we want to sandblast it at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was at Harbor Freight and they've got this rotary resurfacing tool. Oh. So it's like a sander on steroids. Okay. That's got a it's got a big drum on it that it's been sold out like two or three times and I was talking to one of the managers there and he's like, Man, we can't keep them on the shelves. People love these things. Mm. So I was like, Well Interesting. For a hundred bucks and you know, I can go wrong with Harbor Freight. Yeah. So Got that picked up, got it off the trailer. Um, now, if I was just home, dude, life is so busy. I have all these plans, and then suddenly it's almost time for school to start again. Yeah, dude, you're like three weeks out. Oh, don't remind me. Uh, speaking of surfacing, I don't think we talked about this, but when we were at girls' camp, we finished your drum, and instead of painting it, we just rubbed it down. Yeah. With some boiled linseed oil, and it looks awesome. Yeah, my buddy Spencer, um, who he's really the reason I was even making one. He wanted to build one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, if, if you're going to do one, I might as well do one. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got it all cleaned up, and we, we burned it off, and most of the paint... Oh, excuse me. Um, most of the paint had come off when we burned it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also took a wire brush on a drill and just like scoured mm-hmm. the outside of it, used Scotch Bright and Barkeeper's Friend on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had, like, I still have the paint that I was going to paint mine with. And mm-hmm. he was like, dude, you can't. Like, it, it had some cool patina to it. And mm-hmm. um, the wire brush left some pretty cool swirls in it. So went and got the linseed oil and rubbed her down. I'm pretty jealous. I thought about doing that with my offset that i built but i didn't and now that i see yours i'm a little bummed about it but still time man what's it's pretty cool let's see how the surface tool works and yeah that's true maybe we'll maybe we need to strip uh strip rosie down heck yeah be cool uh john you had a shout out for us this week yeah i did i um there is a another podcast here here in the great wild west of utah um the pitmaster podcast that i've listened to off and on but i was listening to them last week week before um right before the 
what do they call it? Was it the, the, the Great West Smokeout or the something? The Great American Smokeout, maybe? Yeah. You um, probably know. I've been looking at the sticker for a long time sitting on my counter. but Yeah. So the, the barbecue competition, they were doing it. They did the, uh, the steak cook-off the night before, and we're talking about it. I think part of those guys did the competition as well, but... Mm. Um, the guys on the podcast are, um, the fellows that started Salt City Barbecue down in Salt Lake. So, uh, very similar kind of topics. And so if you're looking for another podcast, check them out, Hmm. but was listening to them. They, uh, they had a couple of frustrations (laughs) with the competition going into it. It sounds like it was maybe a little chaotic and not quite, uh, what everyone thought it was going to be initially. Yeah, it changed a little bit, and we wondered if we had just r- read something wrong, but that's a little validating to hear that they were a little frustrated with some things. But, yeah, that's cool, though. I'm going to have to start. I'd never heard of them before. I saw some people with the Pitmaster shirt up there. I thought I think that there's a Pitmaster supply company in – Clearfield or somewhere that my brother likes to go to, and oh, that's cool. I, I wonder if maybe they're a sponsor or something. I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, but, yeah. So they're they talk about a lot of the same things. They uh, they're bigger on to the like the KCBS and yeah. It um, seemed like a lot of their stuff was competition based and yeah. They do a lot of the the SCA the State Cooking Association um, cookoffs, which. Honestly, that sounds kind of cool. I, yeah. uh, I mean, steaks are fun, and I will never say no to a good ribeye. Absolutely. But yeah. So, not quite the the super long cooks like yeah like you do on an offset, but right. But still fun, and a good skill to have. Yes. That's how you impress the in laws. Yeah, if you can cook a steak, there's there's not many people that won't be impressed. And right. If they're vegan, you probably. Probably don't want to be hanging out with them anyways. That's true. I like the way you think, John. I like the way you think. So we've got a uh, group of folks here in town this week for work. Um, we're recording later than we normally do because I was at a at a dinner with some of these guys. And the, the first night they were here, we were ordering pizza in and kind of doing a, a little bit of a social with some of the folks in the office and these guys that were in from out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm ordering pizzas and, you know, I'm getting pepperoni and carnivore and you know, island fire, prosciutto, you know, pizza, all these things. And someone goes, well, do you think any of them are like vegan or vegetarian or something? I was like, well, nobody's told me, so I assume not, but it, uh, <laughs> we have one person in the office that is, and uh, mm. it often comes up in conversation that... That's how you know. Were they offended? No, everyone thought it was hilarious when oh, I good. said that, so oh. I felt pretty good. It went over much better in person the first time than when I just told you the story, and sure. you were like, oh. Sure. Cool. <laughs> good, cool story, John. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's how it went over. Nice. So. <laughs> um, but I guess, let Let's get into it. Yeah. I know you weren't excited to have this conversation. I was not. I Okay, let me preface everything I'm about to say with, we did not do as well as we had hoped, me and my brother. And so, all of my viewpoints, I do not mean to talk crap on anything regarding the venue or the way it was organized or anything. I am coming from a position of frustration on my performance as a barbecue champion. So whatever I say, take it with a grain of salt. So, well, let's, let's start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. Let's start. As we learn the very sound of music. Yeah, you get it. I should have known. I shouldn't have had okay. to. Of course I'm going to go there. Well done. Um, so for me comp. Mm hmm. Chicken, ribs, pork, brisket. Yep. Now, one the one one of the frustrating things was 
when we signed up, we thought that they would be providing the meat because that's what they did last year. And we're not like circuit guys. We don't know what's going on. So we're just like, all right, cool. Well, it's like, this wasn't a KCBS sanctioned event. Right. But did they follow KCBS rules? I don't know what rules they followed. I think so. It seems like it. Okay. But they had a very strict rubric for what they were looking for and what you had okay. to do. And so, so. normal KCBS competitions, they provide the meat because it's kind of, it's another one of those level setting things. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense to me. Um, but they didn't. And so. We, uh, I mean, you know, we don't have like a butcher. We went to Costco for our meat and, and, uh, it's an amateur competition. You know, we were not, it turned out to be a little more expensive than we thought we had to get a, um, we had to get a food handler's permit, which I think is totally like valid. But then we also had to get a temporary food establishment permit because they wanted us to be sharing samples with the crowd, which I mean, whatever, but it the price was significantly more this year than it was last year, almost double. So that was a bit of a bummer. How, like, can we talk numbers? Like, how? yeah, it was 50 bucks. So okay, last year it was 30. It didn't break the bank, but it was just like, Oh, well, that's what, plus it was like 150 bucks to get into mm-hmm. the competition. Yeah. It was spendy. It was spendy. And plus we had to provide our own meat. And my, my brother, bless his heart is the one that provided a lot of the, Like he went to Costco and, ogden where he lives and he got a lot of the meat but he ended up getting like nine racks of ribs because he didn't know how much to get and i was like oh that's a lot we probably don't need that much so uh he has some in his freezer for later did they did they inspect your meat no they said they were going to but nobody looked at it i'm not trying to get anybody in trouble i hope that they're well it's not a sanctioned event it's not like it's I mean, and it is a fundraiser, and we understand that, and, and so whatever. But we got there a little bit late that night, so we got there Friday night, um, and apparently, I don't know, it's kind of a bummer, because last year we were right in the thick of everything. Like, there's a huge, big, grassy area. They have teams down one side, teams down the out, other outside, and then uh, two rows of teams in the middle, you know? So you're kind of mm-hmm. surrounded by everybody, get to talk to everybody, and and just kind of see what everybody's doing. We were just kind of by ourselves over on the end. I think because we got there late and they just give you whatever is left. So everybody has a 30 foot by 30 foot square. Um, and then you have access to one outlet. Which for us wasn't a big deal. But their outlets were like job boxes or whatever. Um, and they kept tripping. Because everybody was running their pellet grills. And me and my brother just kept saying, man, I'm glad that we are not using our pellet grills because that would be so frustrating did anybody like bring in a trailer like a yeah. camper trailer? yes the, so there were a couple of those the people right next to us had this nice 38 foot long trailer and they were i think they had a few sponsors i didn't know people were gonna have sponsors but whatever um but yeah, everybody seemed to kind of know this might be an issue so almost everybody had their own generator that they were running stuff with yeah. um so yeah um but yeah, so we get there and and uh, my brother was just kind of there to pick the brisket. I we it was five minutes from my house and I forgot something, so I had to run back and get it. And and it was the pork shoulder, so it was kind of an important thing to remember. Left it in the fridge. Um. So anyway, we got there. We just kind of decided we were going to use the offset. We we're going to go all in on the offset, which was fun. Uh, and honestly, it ran better and more consistently than it ever has. But, um, we just did everything on it, which was a mistake. I think that was kind of our downfall just because, I mean, brisket and pulled pork kind of cook at similar temperatures and that would have been fine. Uh, but we tried to cook our chicken on it. And so we jacked it up like 50 degrees. And I think that that is what dried out our brisket and our pork and stuff. So I will say though, that it was... I mean, it was pretty cool. Like we get there and we're just going like we're, I trim the brisket by headlamp at nine o'clock as the sun's going down. And I mean, I made a mess of it. I, I wish I would have done that a lot more methodically, but I was just like, we got to get this on like in a huge hurry, you know, um, season the brisket with some Holy cow and some hot barbecue rub from Malcolm Reed. And then we got the brisket on. We just ran hickory the whole time on the offset. So, um, 
got it going. Once the brisket was on, then we trimmed the pork shoulder and put it on uh, about right after it. So the brisket went on about 10 p.m. Pork shoulder went on about um, 11, I guess. Have you ever done lollipops? I haven't. I'm not a big drumstick fan. I'm not. So I, uh, yeah, I haven't ever done it. I've seen them. They look really cool. Yeah, I mean, it looked amazing. I'm I'm like you. I'm not a huge... Chicken's fine. I don't hate it, but it's not something that I want to get super creative with. And Yeah. You know. We eat a lot of boneless, skinless thighs around here. Yeah. And I'm a fan of those. Like, I like those, mm-hmm. but they're not competition thighs. Yeah. They're just... It's just chicken. Yeah, chicken is just kind of chicken. a little juicier, a little fattier than uh than chicken breasts and sure. That's what that's what we eat. Yeah, I'm on board with that. We uh so my brother did all the my brother John, which gets confusing. That's why I keep calling him my brother and not John because don't want to confuse all our listeners at home. Um, but would have been really confusing if I had shown up and done it with you guys. That's true. Yeah, like you said, you're going to, and then you never showed up. That's hey, funny. and I was not invited. Okay, we'll talk about this off camera. <laughs> um, anyway, Brother John, uh, he did all the like cutting and got the lollipops all ready to go. And then we, uh, we ca- kind of put them in a plastic bag and let them sit overnight and decided we were going to do our ribs in the morning. So at that point, we just kind of started to... Uh, we just kind of watched the offset and set some alarms and we got a couple of cots and slept. Uh, we were going to set up a tent and then just figured out ah, we'll just sleep outside, which was a big mistake because of mosquitoes. I mean, we were surrounded by marshlands over there. We should have yeah. known. Um, but the mosquitoes were unreal. Uh, but once everybody started rolling smoke and stuff, they kind of chilled out a little bit, which was nice. So, yeah. So, and I know you were down on the end. I don't know if you got a chance to walk around at all. Like most people on pellet grills at this, any other offsets, any, there were a few big offsets. Um, I did not get a good chance to walk around. My brother did. Um, but I was babysitting Rosie for most of the time. Um, but a couple of big offsets on trailers, like the one that we're hopefully going to, uh, dominate with, but there were, I would say the vast majority were pellet grills. Yeah. So, um, which I get, I mean, super consistent, super, I mean, less issues that you got to worry about them taking off on you. So, um, yeah, until the circuit trips and it shuts off in right. the middle of your cook, man. And that happened to the guys next to us had to like borrow our extension cord because the power that they promised them ended up being like 200 feet away. So they had to, you know, it was, it was a bit of a mess. And again, I'm not blaming the venue or anything. This is the second year they're doing this. So they're still trying to figure it out too. Yeah. But I don't remember hearing about all these issues last year. Yeah. Well, this particular venue, uh, I have done other events that like hosted events for work there. Mm. I've often had issues like this. Really? Yeah. Mm. I've, they do some things really, really, really well. Mm-hmm. And other things, it's just absolutely maddening. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was, I mean, it was obvious it was not a barbecue competition that they do all but, the time. And, you know. Yeah. So, and I mean, but. for context, for anyone who's not familiar with the American West Heritage Center, like, really cool place. Like, if you get beautiful, a chance, like. Beautiful place. Come up, especially in uh, in the spring, like early April they Mm -hmm. do baby animal days and they bring in all the baby animals and Mm -hmm. um, they have a train ride they have pony rides very old school pioneer yeah so it's style stuff it is a historical education center yeah and yeah they talk about the farming that started this this valley and they've got like a little you know old time store and blacksmithing and Mm -hmm. um like that's that's the purpose of this facility and it's they do a really good job with that yeah they also try and like it's it is a non-profit organization like Mm -hmm. they try and keep the lights on by doing some other events Mm -hmm. um and they've got sponsors throughout the community that like give money and you know keep this really cool thing going yeah but it 
because their focus isn't as a venue, some things can get sure. missed sometimes. Which I think is understandable, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm not knocking them or anything. But it was a little bit frustrating at times. Not, oh, I'm sure. Not for us, but the people around us. We met one of the coolest guys, Brian. His, uh, his pit name was Brown Chicken Brown Cow. Um, I'm a brown fan. chicken, brown cow. He was, uh, he was awesome. Like he's probably my new best friend. Very is, cool guy. See, uh, see on the gram. I looked, I couldn't find him, but he, um, he was, he drove up here from Bear Lake. So, uh, he works in the mines. He worked nights. So he came up and, uh, really cool guy. Um, but because we were over in the corner together, we got to know each other pretty well and we'd run things by each other and stuff. And, He'd get frustrated because the breaker kept tripping, and we'd get frustrated at different things. So, anyway, cool dude, though. There's a brown chicken brown cow restaurant in Virginia. Yeah, I don't think that's him, if I had to venture to guess. I think he just came up with that name. I don't know that he's on the gram with it, but really cool guy. I got his number. We should have him on the podcast because he's a sweet dude. Let's do it. Um, And he works in the mines? Yeah, works in the mines over there in Kemmer in Wyoming. I didn't even know there were mines. What kind of mines are there? I wish you wouldn't have asked me that because I was just trying to remember. It's not coal mines. Uh, Shoot. I don't remember. I'm looking. Keep talking. Okay. Anyway, way cool dude. Uh, And we had a really good time. But, like, he was frustrated because he put, um, he put, like, Traeger paper down in his box, in his blind box. And you couldn't put any garnish besides that wasn't edible. Yeah, KCBS is really specific. I'm trying to remember which he... While you were there, Mm -hmm. I was like looking up different local events and competitions that... Mm -hmm. um, But KCBS, like it is... There's a whole section on of the rules that's about presentation and like... It lists the type of leafy green vegetables you can use Mm -hmm. for your garnish. Yeah. That was pretty intense. So I felt bad for him because he did a great job, but he got um, disqualified because of his Traeger paper in his box, which I feel like, and he kind of said this too, after the first thing he turned in, it would have been nice for somebody to be like, hey, P.S., you got DQ'd because of your Traeger paper. Maybe don't do that in the next three things you're about to turn in. So, um, but way cool guy. He did Asian inspired ribs. So Ooh. he did, uh, he used fish sauce as a binder. And then he used that Japanese barbecue sauce that we used uh-huh. for the girls. He used that as a glaze. Okay. He said it was some of the best Japanese ribs he's ever had. He didn't have any for us because he turned them all into the people's choice, which is fine. But um, anyway. What did he. Did he use like five spice or something? I as can't a seasoning? remember what he said as the seasoning. Now that you say that, I know he rubbed it with fish sauce and and finished it with that glaze. I can't remember what he said this, yeah. but some kind of an Asian inspired nice seasoning, which I would I want to try. Like I'm yeah. pretty into it. Um, it, in Kemmer, it's pyrite and coal. Was, I think it's the pyrite. I think it sounds like that's what but. they mine there. I had no idea. I yeah, mean, he, makes sense, but he was. Uh, I believe he told us that he was a mechanic and he worked on the mine. So he has built a couple of offsets. He just gets like the extra parts and stuff, builds offsets with them, and then sells them. So he's in the process of building a huge one. He takes the air tanks off of these yeah. giant mining machines. And uh, anyway, real yeah. cool dude. Well, we should definitely talk to yeah, him. Yeah, we should connect with him and see if we can get him on. Um, but. Uh, he took a couple of stickers. Hopefully he reaches out to us. But if he doesn't, I got his number. Yeah, let's uh, definitely talk to him. So yeah, anyway, morning to I don't I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm just running you through my no, this schedule. Is, yeah. So let me know if if you're looking for something different. Um did not sleep very much. That's right? the worst part of these. It was the same thing with Earth. Like Yeah. Yep. We were up at two AM. Mm-hmm. And right as we fell asleep, you know, here comes the minivan. Right. Like, you just, <laughs> Crap. right as you think you're falling asleep, it's like, whoa. That by yeah. the time it's all over, you know, just stay clear. And that's the problem is it was hard to enjoy because at the part where we should have been enjoying the finish and everything, 
It was like a thousand degrees outside, and it we were exhausted. That weekend. So yeah. What uh, what type of thermometers did you use? Uh, so we had my brother had shoot. Let me look it up really quick. I I had my thermopen, but mm-hmm. he borrowed what I believe is a knockoff of meter. Was it the Therm Spike? Mm, I don't. Black think and so. orange one. No, it was. Let's see. I took a picture of it because I'd never heard of it before. Um, oh, crap. Now that I say it, I can't find it. Yum. Yumly. Y U M M L Y. Can I say? Yeah. I mean, that's the picture. I didn't look it up or anything, but. Um, huh. And so it just connected to his phone via Bluetooth. So he stuck it in our brisket. We wrapped it. And then it kind of reported ambient temperature to us and yeah. and stuff, which was, it was nice to have. Um, so uh, it's nice to have the offset on wheels because when the wind changes, it completely changes the way that it performs. So we kind of would pull it around and stuff. So we got up in the morning, we, uh, we trimmed our ribs, seasoned our ribs, and we grossly under or over seasoned our ribs. Like... I had a brand new bottle of, um, of the barbecue rub from Malcolm Reed. His AP rub. Yeah, and we had um, we had been seasoning giant pieces of meat the night before, and so I trimmed and tossed them over to my brother, and he seasoned the ribs. And when he was done with like three of the six racks that we cooked, he was almost out of rub. Ooh. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, let's maybe slow down on it. And he was sleep deprived too. I mean, we were both just like, yeah. what's happening right now, you know? Um, so anyway, the ribs turned out really good, but I mean, it was like a salt lick. Like it was very pretty salty. So I did that one time Yeah, before I ever had my smoker, um, doing ribs on a gas grill mm-hmm. like in, in a, Texas crutch kind of a mm-hmm. style. And I uh miss did I misread or I don't anyways. It was so salty like you could barely eat them. Yeah. And that's it's rough on ribs because I mean pork butt and brisket, I feel like it's hard to over season those. They're such a huge piece of meat. Well, and you've got the surface area to meat right ratios are vastly different yes it's so different on ribs than it is on a pork shoulder right right so (coughs) anyway we seasoned those up got them on the offset and even the ribs i think would have been just fine with the brisket and the pork shoulder on the offset we cooked them all about 250 we rotated the ribs every uh i think we did 30 minutes we would spritz them and then we'd rotate them so the one that was closest to the firebox we'd move further away and just jump everything up um knowing now what we what we learned is as we rotated those we should have flipped them as well so that the side facing the back was this was facing the front because the side towards the firebox got a little bit charred on the bottom um it wasn't a huge deal but you could definitely tell the difference so um, that's one thing that we learned, uh, when we went to plate them and then, uh, and then we threw our chicken on and that's where things, I, I mean, sleep deprived. We weren't thinking we had brought the Weber to do the chicken on just because I mean, non-sleep deprived Mike and brother John were like, Oh yeah, that'll make more sense because we cook it at a different temperature. Sleep deprived Mike and John are like, let's not, let's just throw it on there. Start another fire. Exactly. Exactly. So we threw those on and jacked up the temperature and that screwed, I think, everything else. The chicken was okay. It was fine. We didn't really care about the chicken, to be honest with you. We were just like, whatever. It looked awesome. The whole lollipop thing looked great. And we bought. Did you have a hanger to like set the sock? No, we did, uh, so we did, we cooked them in a foil pan, then we took them off, we got some Champion Blues Hog barbecue sauce, uh-huh. you ever use that? I, I got used it, but I have... I got a gallon of it, so if you want some, let me know. I didn't want to run out, and we used, like, a cup of it, maybe. How do you so. like it? It's good, it's different. 
I don't know. It's fine. It. I mean, it's competition. Like, there's some vinegary elements to it and stuff. I love vinegar on pork. You might like it. So, and it was, I mean, it was fine. But, uh, so we, we took the chicken. We cooked it until it was about 165. And then we took them and just dipped them. I had one of those, like, kind of like a tray. It was a Blackstone liner for the drip pan, you know, oh, almost yeah, like yeah. a loaf pan. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I heated the sauce up in that. It's kind of nice. Just put it on top of the firebox and it heated yeah. up, uh, which was nice. Didn't have to use any grill space or open up the grill. Uh, and then we opened it up and we took the chicken and just dipped it in there and put it on a wire rack and then put it back in to finish. Like two of them fell over as they were finishing. The rest of them really did pretty well. So you put them in standing up? Yeah, we put them in standing up. So Cool. Um it turned out really good, actually. They looked awesome. We over-seasoned those as well. Again, sleep-deprived. In hindsight, we should season everything the night before so that we're not trying to do it yeah. on a half-hour se- sleep. What did you season the chicken with? What did we use for the chicken? I think we used um, Malcolm Reed's Hot Barbecue Rub okay. and a little AP Rub. I think that's all we used on that. I wanted to use that garlic junkie. Mm-hmm. Um, because I used it on, on some chicken earlier in the week, but I just wasn't familiar with it. And I was like, I don't know, yeah. I'll just stick to what I know. So, um, well, that's like a, that's a really strong, like, yeah. distinct rub. Right. That I don't know how that do with a barbecue sauce. I agree. I don't think it would blend very well with, with at least that barbecue sauce. Maybe there's one that it would go with, but it's, it's um, delicious by itself. Speaking of Malcolm Reed. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to his podcast. Love it. it. I've listened to it before, but it's been a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was fun to get back into some of his stuff. He just came out with a, or is coming out with a zero sugar barbecue sauce. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I've not heard this. I haven't. Um, hmm. I hadn't either, but he talked about um, one of the really popular brands of that. Is, it's, I think it's G Hughes. Hmm. Um the sugar-free barbecue sauce and like there's a real strong like artificial sweetener flavor to it which mm-hmm. like it's hard to avoid but right he's a uh, according to your boy malcolm like he's he's figured it out mm. well which I think in malcolm awesome. we trust man you yeah. know stuff yeah i'm excited to try and get my hands on some yeah that's awesome so anyway awesome. sorry no it's all good i don't remember what we were talking about we're chicken. Talking. Yep. So the chicken turn in was twelve thirty. Ribs were one thirty. Pork was two thirty. Brisket was three thirty. And that's kind of late too for turn. Like it's yeah. funny KCBS when I was reading the rules, like it talks about like standard turn in times start at noon. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like every thirty minutes. Yeah. Well, and I will say we got there the night before, threw it on at ten p.m. There were guys rolling up at 6, 7 a.m. who hadn't even gotten their brisket yet. Going hot and fast. Yeah, that were just going for Could it. Could you tell where the briskets came from? or They were donated by JBS, but that's all we know. They didn't have how much they weighed or anything on the package. It was just wrapped. So, yeah. How Decent briskets? It was fine. I don't know. It was, I've seen a lot better. But... That being said, we got there late, and so I think a lot of people had already picked over what, because they just said, here you go, pick one. So I think a lot of people had already gotten theirs. My brother said there were like six or seven when he went to pick his, so. Um, That's so hard. Yeah. It was, it was a bummer, man. Like, I was telling John, like, two weeks ago, I cooked one of the best briskets I've ever had in my life. I was feeling really confident going into the competition, and then just too many variables and stuff you can't control but the chicken is what killed us because it was the first thing to turn in so we cranked up the temperature for an hour or two yeah and then tried to bring it back down our ribs were charred on the side of the firebox our pork turned out okay our our brisket got overdone and it was super bummer um what were you using you said hickory where'd you get your hickory from. I got it from Home Depot. I just got two bags of their mini logs of hickory yeah. um, just because I knew it was there. I think it's so. so cool that Home Depot started carrying that. Yeah, and I hope that they keep doing it because I'm a huge fan of that hickory. 
Like, and it, it burns consistently. It burns hot. Um, you know, you can kind of plan some of the other stuff that I've gotten. Like we just grabbed some from uh, a local orchard guy. who was just getting rid of some. Uh, it's hard to predict. doesn't catch as geezy. Well, I think this stuff was probably just more seasoned and yeah, ready to go. Yeah, it hasn't cured in season. Yeah. Did we? We're going to have to make a run down to Salt Lake to... We should. Do a truckload. Of also, we, because that price is one. way better than... I mean, it's... We went through one and probably three quarters of bags of hickory from Home Depot, and they're 30 bucks each, so... Yeah. It was a bit of a spendy fuel consumption, but... Um, anyway, <clears throat> we turned in, we got done, we were just ready to be done at that point and, uh, kind of bummed at the results. And I don't even remember what they were, but we were in the bottom half. We were not the very bottom, but we were in the bottom half, which kind of put a sour taste in my mouth for competition barbecue, just because we had worked so hard and then just, and we both said like, this is not our best work. Like we did not submit anything thinking that's the one we're going to win, you know, but it was just like, Oh, that was a lot of work to then sit and wait for results. And there were like 80 ties, which makes me think maybe you should rethink the way that you're scoring things. No. Um, so we had to wait for him to figure all that out. It was probably five or six o'clock by the time they finally gave us the results. And, uh, and it was just kind of a bummer. Same teams. You know, I know a lot of guys were sponsored, which is kind of like, I mean, whatever. More power to them for going out and getting that. But it's like, you know, most of us were just a lot of blue-collar workers that were just like, yeah, let's do this. This sounds fun, you know. And then you got people that were sponsored, didn't have to pay for their meat or their entry, and were just there, a little less stress. And so it was kind of a bummer, yeah. you know. No, I, And I mean, I – one of the things pitmasters talked about on their podcast is like there are a lot of folks that that's the type of competition they do they do maybe one or two a year mm -hmm. and then you've got the, like the pros who you know they're doing 20 competitions a year and traveling the country and yeah. you know they cook they do three cooks a week trying to get it dialed in and get it perfected so that they mm -hmm. can be like that one's money right i know i know what this one's gonna do i know what that's gonna do and right i mean i've cooked a lot of pork shoulders in in my life mm -hmm. like i don't think like i could get it that dialed in right well and i mean they're so dialed in to the point where they use their own rubs they use their own sauce mm -hmm. i mean we bought the stuff we like off the shelf, you know? Yeah. So didn't expect to win, but it was pretty disheartening to do, do so low. Again, I understand the mistakes that we made, uh, but it's just kind of a bummer, you know, but they were all improvements on last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. We did better than we did last year, but I mean, last year looking, I mean, this year compared to last year, we kept saying like, this is significantly less stressful. Like yeah. we have an idea of what we're doing. We're less just running around like chickens with our heads cut off. We had a pretty good system. So, yeah, I don't know. It was fun. I don't, I'm not dying to do it again, especially after just how tired I was and how poor we did. It was just like, man, why are we doing this? But I'm sure I'll probably get back up on the wagon next year. Because yeah. it's fun. I mean, I love cooking for people. It was a good opportunity to just kind of compare my skills to other people's, you know what I mean? But I feel like a competition is not, I don't know. It's just so different. Like it's not a time to like experiment, have fun with different flavors. No, like they're looking for this, 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 and this make the color look like this, make the taste look like this. And so it's hard to, I don't feel like, and maybe if you're really good, you can, but it's hard to like have a lot of fun with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd love to know, uh, brown chicken, brown cow, like, had he not been disqualified? Right. Like, how would those, like, Asian ribs exactly. have Exactly, like, something a, different. Well, how would that have been received by the judges, or would they have been like, nah? Yeah, I've heard, yeah. like, I've listened to teams talk about that before, like, when you do competition, like, 
there's a reason we call them competition ribs. Mm -hmm. Like you say competition ribs, everybody knows what that looks like. They know what it smells like. They know what it tastes like. Right. Because you're not trying to like be creative and like do your best work. You're Mm -hmm. trying to do work that the judges will think is the best. Exactly. You're almost trying to mimic what they want. Mm -hmm. And it's less fun that way. I mean, it's fun because it's, I mean, this was the first like sporting event that I've competed in a long time. So that the competition aspect is fun. I don't know what I want out of it, you know, like it just sponsors money. Yeah, that's true. Fortune. That is true. Could have done with the prize money, but yeah. Invitation to Memphis in May. Yeah. Heck yeah. That'd be sweet. Anyway, it was, again, I'm not trying to talk crap on anybody. It was a, it was a fundraiser. Uh, you know, most of the workers were volunteers. I'm not trying to, you know, crap on the competition or the venue or anything or the way it was run, but it, I came away a little bit frustrated and just kind of didn't love it as much as I had hoped that I would, which a lot of it, like I said, was my own doing and the way that I performed. So, but that's a a very responsible way to look at it. No, but, um, I guess in the beneficiary, it's the Logan Food Bank. Uh huh. The food so, pantry. Yeah. So they <laughs> they and we talked to the guy. I actually went to high school with, with the guy that was uh, kind of helping run it. He's I don't know if he's the assistant director of the food uh, pantry or what's what. His name? Jake Netsley. Uh, he's not the director. No, I'm Matt sure. Whitaker is the director. Yeah, there you go. I yeah. was gonna say Matt buys pellets from us. Yeah, so. good guy. Really good guy. I had a couple of his kids in my class. He's a good guy, but um, Jake was there when we were just talking with him. He says, you know, they try to make as much as they can and then they end up splitting it 50, 50 with the heritage center and the food pantry. So oh. they make a little bit of money, but it kind of isn't yeah, as it. much as you'd hope. Yeah. Stick it to pantry. American heritage center. Let's yeah. go find a city park next year and do it at, um, American heritage center. has got all sorts of corporate sponsors. And- yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But, yeah, like I say, it was good. Am I going to become a pro competition circuit? I don't think so. I'd rather just cook for people for fun and yeah. and enjoy it a little bit and experiment and talk about it with you. But uh, it was a good experience, and it's, you know, any any excuse to do barbecue is a, a win. But, yeah, so. Well, cool, man. Well, I'm glad you did it. Um, totally understand the frustrations, though. Yeah. Um, and I think that's valid, and, you know. Hopefully Jake and Matt hear hear some of it, and I'm sure they're getting it from all sorts of different places. The right, and it's hard. Like anytime you do an event or really anything, like everyone's got an opinion, and it's mm-hmm. well. And I know that there's so much that goes into the planning, and yeah. so it's hard to be critical of that because well, you know, you're being you're being really like respectful and nice and like understanding about it. <laughs> I think the the trick is. As someone who's planned a lot of, like, not barbecue events, but, like, events and, like, done different things, Mm -hmm. like, you have to take that and then iterate on it and get better. Yeah. If it's the same thing again year after year, like, that's when events die. Yeah. So. Makes sense. So. Anywho. Well. There it is. Next year. Next year we'll have a, a big trailer smoker. Yes. I will bring my camp trailer. There we go. With a big generator. I like where this is going. Or in the AC all night. Yep. I'm on board. No, it would be fun. It'd be fun to have a fat guys with smokers team. Like I was hoping to do oh I did I forgot. I saw our buddy Josh Toon oh, from R. I. P. Barbecue. Yeah, he stopped by, great guy. And he was That's like, awesome. Hey, we're headed to Maverick. Do you want us to run grab you something before <laughs> before results? So nice. Unfortunately, I'd had like four or five people from my family bring me a Maverick drink at that point. I tried and I to. I was and you, shaky. Yeah, I tried to, and you turned me down. Yeah, I was like, I know, about you? I know. I was shaky. I was like, you know what? I probably need is water because it's a hundred degrees, and I've had like gallons of Diet Mountain Dew. But anyway, great guy, Josh. Appreciate it. I mean, uh, he stopped by and talked to me for a minute. I just was so sleep deprived. I hope I didn't offend him or anything, but it was very nice. Just asked us how things went. 
offered a Maverick drink. Great guy. So RIP barbecue. I was going to ask him too about About his plans. If he's building, if he's cooking, uh, but I didn't get a chance when I turned around, he was gone. So nice. Anywho. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, until next year when we, uh, when we dominate the competition. Mm. Pro sponsors. Heck yes. Who's going to sponsor us? Meat Church. Meat Church and Malcolm Reed. Yes. By their powers combined. <laughs> I am Captain Platter. I am Captain Barbecue. <laughs> That'd be sweet. And with that. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Mike. Well, this is Fat Guys with Smokers. Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of Fat Guys with Smokers. Don't forget to like, subscribe.